Hello. In this video, Professor Wellens and myself will explain non-evident ventricular pre-excitation. Would you suspect a ventricular pre-excitation from this electrocardiogram? We will see that this case is an example of what we call non-evident ventricular pre-excitation, in which the PR interval is normal, is equal to or more than 120 milliseconds. The QRS complex is not wide, is less than 120 milliseconds, and the delta wave is invisible or hardly perceptible. And this is in spite of the fact that the, we will see that this patient has an ventricular accessory pathway capable of anterograde conduction. In this slide, we show the 12 ECG of the same patient that we have presented before. Uh, on the left, uh, during sinus rhythm, and here on the right, during coronary sinus pacing. During sinus rhythm, pre-excitation is not evident in spite of existing an accessory atrioventricular pathway that is conducting in the anterograde direction. Why is that? The reason is that the atrioventricular conduction times via the accessory pathway in this patient are very similar to those via the normal AV node his pathway. However, by pacing from the coronary sinus, we are close to the atrial insertion of the accessory pathway and therefore we reduce the atrioventricular conduction times via the accessory pathway while the atrioventricular conduction times via the normal pathway remain similar to those observed during sinus rhythm. This is why during coronary sinus pacing we have maximal pre-excitation. Pre-excitation becomes very evident. In this electrocardiogram we must explain why in spite of existing an anterogridly conducting accessory pathway the PR interval is 150 milliseconds, the QRS complex has a duration of 90 milliseconds and there is not a clear delta wave. The PR interval is not short because the accessory pathway is located in the left lateral atrioventricular groove, very far from the sinus node. Thus, uh, it takes uh, a long time to reach the ventricles via this accessory pathway, 95 milliseconds from the sinus node to the atrial insertion of the bypass tract and 55 additional milliseconds to cross the accessory pathway to arrive into the left uh, ventricle. Uh, the QRS complex is not wide and the delta wave is not evident because the atrioventricular conduction times via the AV not his pathway are identical to those over the accessory pathway, 150 milliseconds, 45 milliseconds from the sinus node to the entry of the AV node, 60 milliseconds to cross the AV node, and the 45 additional milliseconds to arrive in the ventricles via the bundle branch system. These electrocardiograms are from the same patient uh, that we have been discussing so far. Panel A shows the electrocardiogram during sinus rhythm and the panel B uh, shows the 12 VDCG during left atrial pacing from the coronary sinus. Note that in panel B there is maximal pre-excitation whereas in panel A pre-excitation is not evident. <clears throat> maximal pre-excitation in panel B is the result of stimulating close to the atrial insertion of the accessory pathway. This results in shorter atrioventricular conduction times uh, via the accessory pathway. 20 milliseconds we have postulated from the site of pacing to the uh, atrial insertion of the accessory pathway and 55 milliseconds to cross the accessory pathway, a total of 75 milliseconds, whereas conduction times uh, to the ventricles via the normal pathway 
are um, more or less similar to those uh, observed during sinus rhythm. 45 milliseconds from the site of pacing to the entry of the AV node, 50 milliseconds to cross the AV node, and 45 milliseconds to arrive in the ventricular myocardium uh, via the bundle branch uh, system. A total of 140 milliseconds. So the difference between these two values, 140 minus 75 is 65, and then we have pre-excitation during 65 milliseconds that gives this electrocardiographic pattern of maximal pre-excitation illustrated in panel B. Accessory pathways uh, involved in cases of non-evident pre-excitation shouldn't be confused with concealed accessory pathways. Accessory pathways in cases of non-evident pre-excitation are capable of conducting in anterograde direction and we demonstrate this by pacing close to the atrial insertion of the accessory pathway like in panel B that pacing from the coronary sinus uh, produces a maximal pre-excitation. However, in concealed accessory pathways, pacing close to the atrial insertion of the accessory pathway would not produce pre-excitation at all because these concealed accessory pathways cannot conduct in anterograde direction. They have unidirectional uh, anterograde uh, block. They keep, however, the ability to conduct uh, retrogradely and therefore they can sustain atrioventricular uh, re-entry tachycardia of the orthodromic type. We would like to thank you very much for your attention and uh, we advise you to watch uh, uh, Types of Pre-Excitation Part 5.